Um, and functions are a way to organize your um, your code in a way that makes it more readable and also that cuts down um, on the uh, amount of code that you have. Um, anytime you have something that is going to, um, some code that's going to run more than once, you should think about uh, writing it into a function and just calling that function every time that you want that code to run. Um, and that's a way that you can shorten your code. But also, um, because you name functions, um, there, there is such a thing as a, an anonymous function, which has no name. But um, if you name your functions, then the name of the function can help you understand the code better. So uh, instead of having a block of code that you have to look at and figure out what it does, you see the function call uh, and you say, oh, OK, so it's moving the sprite or um, it's dropping a coin. Um, and it, it makes your code make a lot more sense. So we have some code here. And we're going to um, add some uh, functions to it. Actually, just modify the uh, code so that we're using the functions. So I'm going to hit the Run button, and we can see what the code does. It's a kind of a Petrix style thing where I'm dropping these coins from the top. And if a coin hits the bottom, I lose a point. And if a coin um, is hits the rabbit, then I gain a point. Okay, and what should happen is when I get to a certain point uh, in the, or a certain score, then uh, then the uh, the background should change. Something should change to indicate what's happening. So let me stop that, and uh, you can see the code here does all that correctly, uh, but it's not terribly readable. Even though I have added a few comments in, and comments certainly do help you understand the code better. Um, but uh, I can see, first of all, I've got code here, which repeats in two other places, here and here. So this code is responsible for dropping a new coin at a random velocity from a random X location at the top of the screen. And uh, so this would be an easy thing to just copy this code here and write a function. And in fact, I've done this already. So you can see I have a function named setCoin that has these three lines of code in it. And now instead of looking and seeing what's going on here, oh, it's a coin, and where is this starting from, a random number, um, I've got a name, setCoin. And I can include a comment here that's a little bit more detailed than the comments I have elsewhere in the code. So um, drops a coin from a random x location at a random velocity. OK. And so now, instead of having this code repeat, I'll just do a call to setCoin. Notice the naming convention. Function names we want to be set up like variable names. And uh, that means start with a lowercase letter and use camel case. Um, with function and variable names, they must start with a letter. They can have digits in them, but the digit cannot be the first character. Um, you can also use underscores, but for relatively obvious reasons, you can't use plus symbols and minus symbols and slashes. So stay away from any special characters except for underscores. Um, and uh, so now what I'm going to do is I'm oh, I have to put my semicolon. I'm going to copy this and put that function call in here as well. Another thing you'll notice about functions is um, the function call and the function definition are always uh, um, have parentheses. So whether or not you pass anything in, um, you always have parentheses there. So let me go up here to the code up here. And I'll take that comment out because I don't really need that anymore. It doesn't hurt to leave it in, but I just want to shorten my code up a bit. All right. So now I have three calls to setCoin. 
let me test it and make sure it works still works correctly yep it's going up if i miss it it goes down everything's working the same i've just simplified my code a little bit and made it a little bit more readable right um all right, so now the next thing we can do is look at some other um, code and say, hmm, I don't have code that is redundant, that occurs over and over again, but I do have some code that maybe I could simplify by um, describing it, by what it does, rather than um, just having the code there. So here I have a bunch of code that moves the rabbit, all right, moves it back and forth. So I'm going to take, I'm just going to cut that down, and I'm going to make that into a function that I'll call um, move bunny. All right. So every time it goes to the draw loop, it'll look for this move bunny function. And I will paste that code in here. Actually, first of all, I'll type function move bunny. All right. Functions always have the curly braces afterwards. I'll paste that code in there. Now, uh, a couple things about functions in JavaScript. First of all, uh, unlike variables, functions uh, can be defined at the end of the code, even though you're calling the function earlier on. Um, JavaScript does something that's called function hoisting, which means that it reads all the functions into memory so that they're hoisted up to the top and they're available uh, even though you um, actually haven't gotten to that spot in the code yet. So that's how I can call move bunny here even though the code doesn't have it here. If I tried to do this with a variable, I would get an error. All right, so I'm gonna put um, move, I'll put sprite, sprite left, and right. Um, uh, this is a little bit too, I probably would make this comment a little more concise, but uh, I'll just go arrow keys. Not proud of that comment, but it, it does describe what happens here, right? So let's see if that works. Oh, got a problem. Got a problem. It did solve the, the issue. Uh, it was a uh, misnamed uh, or a uh, mistyped uh, function call. I had not capitalized the B and move bunny up here. So anyway, we're back. Uh, I have another block of code here, which is also not redundant, but um, could be replaced with a function. And this is the uh, code that um, scores the coin. Right? So I'm going to do the same thing here that I did with move bunny. I, I, by the way, I've already tested that move bunny actually works. So I'm going to cut this out and I'm going to replace this with um, a call to a function named score coin. Right. And that'll check to make sure that the, uh, that the coin is scored properly. So I will paste that down here, function score coin. No parameters, but uh, put empty parentheses here. And we'll then paste that code in there. All right, and close that function. And uh, let's just test to see if that works the way I expect it to. And by golly, that still functions. Okay, so I've simplified my code. Let me go ahead and put a comment in for that. Um, Actually, let's say um, updates score based on um, whether coin when coin goes out of play. I'll put update score when coin goes out of play. You know, and if it's hard to write a comment for it, maybe you ought to think about why that's important to describe what the um, code does so that somebody else isn't left there guessing. I and mean, if you if you can't describe it, then um, then how is someone else going to be able to easily figure out what it does? Their own. Um, what, do what you can to divide your program up um, into functions. Um, you can notice that 
it, my draw loop now is quite short, um, and it's uh, at least half function calls. Uh, also, they uh, ask you in the instructions to get the background to change when the score reaches a certain point. So give that a pop. And uh, if you can't um, get that solved, I will make up another video that will show you how to do that. But give it a shot on your own first. Okay.